This is the Lancaster Outlook, and I'm Wendy Williams. Hard financial times have come to our nation, but how is Lancaster weathering the storm? With that economic outlook is Vern Lawson. He's the city's director of economic development and redevelopment. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. We have recessionary times in our nation and, of course, here in Lancaster. How are we faring? Well, better than you might think. Uh, we certainly have experienced a downturn in residential building activity, but the commercial projects and the industrial projects are still moving ahead. We're very encouraged that a number of developers um, are continuing to um, plan their, their programs. We haven't had hardly anybody drop out, and I think uh, there's a recognition that this is a cycle that everybody's been through before, and they want to be planned up and, and ready to roll when, uh, when the housing ticks back up. So, so we're very busy. In some instances, isn't this a, a better time to build because it's less expensive, more people are on hand to help, uh, the city's not so busy? Yes, that's certainly true, and, and uh, some of the growing pains that we experienced during the booms um, certainly aren't here. There is more time for planning, but uh, I guess I'm, I'm very encouraged because uh, our area is somewhat geographically isolated, and sometimes it's harder to get new commercial development here. But um, we just had a meeting uh, with the International Conference of Shopping Centers, and we actually had 10 appointments with developers who want to build centers in the city. So, you know, times, times are good. Uh, it'll be a while until they actually get constructed, but we're doing, uh, you know, a lot of work to, Does to get it planned. Does that surprise you? We hear such negative about uh, our country right now. You think that all building would stop. Why is it continuing? Well, I think because the people that we deal with are pros and they've seen ups and downs and booms and busts before. I think the other thing about the Antelope Valley is we've really achieved to an extent some economic diversification. Uh, many years ago, 10, 15 years ago, our primary industry was aerospace. Today we have um, a lot of economic diversification. We have um, RV manufacturers, we have wares and distribution facilities, we have large call centers. The countrywide soon to be a B of A is almost 1,300 people working out there. So that economic diversification helps us, as do the commuters. We have about 60,000 people that commute out of this valley every day, and as a government we certainly don't want to encourage that, but in reality those um, people bring their paychecks back here. So our economy is a lot more resilient today than it's been in a long time. That's really, really good news. I would wonder, do you actually go out and, and solicit businesses to come to our community? Is that part of economic development? Absolutely. That's the attraction component and uh, probably uh, receives the majority of our effort. But the good news, too, is that we've had quite a bit of success. And, uh, you know, I mentioned to you uh, some of the diversification we've had. Companies like Rexall, Lance Campers, Starwood Hotels, Rite Aid, Michaels, Sigma. Um, that means that now we spend a portion of our time on industry retention. We want to make sure that once a company gets here, they stay here. And what we've really found, and Countrywide would be a good example of that, is once that they get into Lancaster, they like the labor force, they like the business climate, and they go ahead and expand. Countrywide actually doubled its facility, went from 100,000 feet to 200,000. Michaels, out on the uh, city's west side in the Foxfield Industrial Quarter, actually expanded from 435,000 feet up to 750,000 square feet. So A decade ago, I remember the economist saying, we didn't have enough warehouse space. But we changed that, haven't we? Yes, yeah, we've, we've actually had warehouse and distribution and we also have what we call spec space, space that was built without a contract so that small businesses have an opportunity to lease space or we have a lot of what are called industrial condos where they can go out and actually buy just like a residential condo. And we've been discovered by a number of very uh, sophisticated developers out of the LA area. And so um, we're What's really- What's the attraction? Curious. When we look at Lancaster, what, what attracts businesses up here? Well, it's a combination of things. It depends on the business. One of the biggest things is the availability of labor. Obviously, because our housing cost is substantially less than the rest of Southern California, um, you, know, you can get affordable labor. I think uh, the government's attitude, I think our city council has done an outstanding job in um, staying business friendly. Uh, you're familiar. Well, you've, got a, you've got the award, right? Yes, yes. Uh, LADC. Uh, this past year uh, designated us out of the 88 cities in Los Angeles County as the most business friendly city. And that's a combination of things. Uh, like I mentioned, it starts with the uh, philosophy of the city council, but it's also shared with all of the staff. Uh, we really look and recognize that uh, we're in a very competitive industry. This is nothing we can take for granted, and we know that we have to work hard to keep a strong economy. But it's an overall culture of the city. It's not just something that happened by accident, that you're the most business friendly. Absolutely, and it's something we've worked at for a long time, and it's uh, you know, gratifying to be recognized by our peers, but uh, it's work that will continue forever. Um, you know, I really believe that our constituency are the unemployed or underemployed citizens up here, 
and if you're hitting that freeway every day, like we mentioned, 60,000 people, then we want to get you a job here, and that's, that's the plan. Are we making progress to taking commuters off the highway? Absolutely. All of those companies that I talked to you about um, you know, rep, uh, represent that. Uh, I had a deal a couple of years ago where we actually attended an um, uh, anniversary out at Rite Aid, and there was about 1,100 people that worked there. Most of them were there in the cafeteria. And it was, it was neat to sit there and recognize that because of the efforts of the city, um, there's 1,100 people that have health insurance benefits and that don't have to jump on that freeway every day. And I'm sure they don't understand why all that happened, but uh, we do, and we want to replicate it. And it's a huge quality of life issue, getting off that, getting off that freeway. It really is. We, your, your title as the Economic Development Director, but also redevelopment, which is uh, a, another huge uh, issue here. Can you talk about what's going on in redevelopment? Sure. Uh, redevelopment is actually simply defined as making the sick part of the city well. And as the city grows and ages, we have blight that exists in the community. And the redevelopment agency was specifically created uh, back in 1978 to uh, look at that blight and fix it. And uh, in conjunction with our housing and neighborhood revitalization group, um, we've had a lot of activity and efforts. Um, the downtown revitalization, the council recently approved a uh, downtown new specific plan. I think you're going to see very, very good things there. We have a new museum and art gallery that's going to uh, uh, take over where the old Wells Fargo Bank was. We have an outfit called U-Wink, which is a uh, kind of a youth-oriented restaurant that will provide uh, you know, recreational opportunities. It's tied to computers. Um, with the planning department, we've adopted what's called a new form-based code, and it's different than conventional zoning in that it thinks kind of three-dimensionally and looks at uh, what buildings will look at when you drive by and look at them, and actually will uh, favor higher density. The density, um, you know, the artist lofts that are under construction now will be about five stories, and and uh, much of it uh, you know, will be the higher higher level. So a lot of the downtown revitalization will actually, will it be funded through uh, redevelopment funds? Yes, it's a combination of funding. Uh, the housing folks have, uh, have good money for uh, the more dense housing, but um, you know, we participate with tax increment financing, and uh, we have a deal coming up that uh, the high school district is actually going to uh, sell us a part of where the old museum was, and that's allowing us to create this new museum art gallery. Um, we work with the property owners in what are known as owner participation agreements, and uh, we have a new facade improvement program, which will be f money uh, available to fix up the front of the buildings, because you know, we really think this opportunity to, um, to revitalize our central core is a tourism opportunity. If you had uh, 50 restaurants in the downtown of the Ilk of, say, Lemon Leaf, uh, we really believe that it'd be something that people would come up from L.A. for the day. Totally so yeah, that's, that's what we're looking that's at. Great, you doing? You are a busy person. <laughs> Thank you so much for your efforts. It's good to hear good news, even though everywhere else it seems like we're hearing the sky is falling. But Lancaster sky is looking positively clear. Yes, it did. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. You've been listening to Vern Lawson, the city's director of economic development and redevelopment, and this is the Lancaster Outlook.